Here we go, trial number one. It is warm to the touch, which is a great indicator of this being an exothermic reaction. Apparently our adopted wild goose also wants to learn about chemistry. If you've had the chance to watch Yes Day, streaming now on Netflix, the whole premise of the video is that the kids literally get their way for an entire day. So their parents have to say yes to anything the kids want, within reason not risking their life kind of stuff. But the aspect of this video that we on the DeConta channel are most interested in happens to do with this little boy. And he is the nerd of the movie. He wants his parents to agree to him throwing a nerd party at their home, essentially covering their entire house with foam. Throughout the movie, it's frequently mentioned that this young boy has found the perfect catalyst to make this reaction happen. And they say the word catalyst very, very frequently. They also mention that this reaction is non-toxic, eco-friendly, if you will. And they have 25 11 year olds frolicking through the foam of the house. So of course it would have to be kid friendly in order for the kids to be playing in it. The director of this movie even said it was nearly impossible for them to film this over the three day period because getting 25 11 year olds to stop playing in foam when you say cut is nearly impossible. But the director was also pushing us to believe that this was a chemical reaction. And we here on the DeConta channel do not trust all the chemistry we see streamed on TV. So let's dive into the chemistry that could actually be happening for this copious amount of foam to occur in the movie yesterday. Welcome to the flock. From all the possible reactions out there that would produce gases, I've limited down to two reactions that are most likely to be the case from the movie yesterday. The first reaction is the more kid-friendly reaction. I say kid-friendly because it uses baking soda, water, vinegar, soap, all things that wouldn't hurt children running through it and getting literally covered from head to toe in it. However, in this list of chemicals, there is nowhere a catalyst to be found. And frequently throughout the movie, they say, a catalyst. So even though this reaction here best fits the requirement for non-toxic and kid-friendly, it's most likely not the chemical reaction that occurred. And we'll also perform this reaction so we can compare the foam created from it to the foam created in yesterday. The second option for reaction is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Now typically this reaction is performed with 35% hydrogen peroxide. 35% hydrogen peroxide will literally burn your skin on contact. So it's very corrosive, we would say. Not the ideal thing for 25, 11 year olds to be frolicking about in, if you catch my drift. But this reaction fits the requirement from the movie that it has a catalyst. We could either use yeast as a catalyst with 3% hydrogen peroxide. Side note, we can't use the yeast with the 35% hydrogen peroxide because that reaction gets too hot and the yeast won't survive in that hotness. So you'd have to use 3%, which would actually be more kid friendly because that's what you likely have under your bathroom sink. But still, you wouldn't really want all of your kids to be covered from head to toe in 3% hydrogen peroxide either. Anybody that's gotten a cut on their hand would know why. And the other catalyst option is potassium iodide. Of course, you could also use sodium iodide, but potassium is the better catalyst for this reaction. So if we use potassium iodide with 35% hydrogen peroxide, then that would create a lot of foam, but would it continue making the same volume of foam as shown in the Yes Day movie? Well, Let's find out. Let's first compare the foam created from the kid-friendly reaction, the one that does not have a catalyst, but would be considered the most child-friendly and non-toxic version. This one uses the baking soda and vinegar, and we also just add soap to it in order to capture the CO2 gas that's formed. This here would be the foam product that we are hoping for. Let's check it out. Here's all the materials we'll be using. Here we go, trial number one with vinegar and baking soda.
definitely not as fantastic as the Yes Day foam. As you can see from this reaction, once it's completely ceased and used up all of the chemicals, the foam doesn't just continue to be made. Whereas in the movie, Yes Day, the foam continues to shoot out of the toilet like an eruption volcano of foam. So obviously this can't be the reaction that the director was implying is occurring in Yes Day. One, because there's no catalyst, and two, because there's no steady stream of reoccurring foam. What about if we try the next most kid-friendly reaction, the one that uses the 3% hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. If we add yeast as the catalyst, and we have soap to capture the oxygen gas bubbles that form as one of the products, we should be able to make foam. Let's check out what that foam looks like in comparison to yesterday's foam and see if that's what the director implied. Now for trial number two, 3% hydrogen peroxide and yeast. This is so slow. Definitely not the explosive foam we expected to see as it was in yesterday. And the foam itself is rather disappointing as well. Look, it's frothy, but it's not very foamy. Not voluptuously foamy. It is warm to the touch, which is a great indicator of this being an exothermic reaction, meaning it produces heat. As you saw in the experiment, this foam formed really slow, and it wasn't very fluffy. It didn't have that huge volume that was depicted in the Yes Day movie. So this can't be the reaction the director was implying either. So then of course we have to move on to the dangerous, not so kid friendly options of the same chemical reaction of the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Except this time we would have to use a much more concentrated version. I personally only have access to 12% hydrogen peroxide instead of the 35% hydrogen peroxide. But we will still be using the catalyst of potassium iodide and soap to capture the oxygen gas bubble product. Now I will be demonstrating this chemical reaction with the 12% hydrogen peroxide in much smaller volumes than what was depicted in the chemistry of yesterday. So then you might be wondering, well, what if I used the same amount of volumes that the kids were using? If you look at the image above my head, that is the world record elephant toothpaste, which is what this reaction is endearingly called, chemical reaction. And do you want to guess how much chemical they needed to use to fill that volume an entire backyard, which would be equivalent to yesterday? Day, filling an entire house with foam. They had to use 625 liters of 30% hydrogen peroxide in a 500 gallon container. Now that is way more chemical than what was implied in the movie yesterday. The kids did not have access to 625 liters of 30% hydrogen peroxide which again, would burn your skin on contact. Also notice in the image above that there's steam coming off of this chemical reaction. That's because this reaction is exothermic. It releases heat and lots of it. So the kids would not only be getting corrosive chemical all over their body and their skin, but they'd also literally be burning themselves if they were using that much chemical. Now, when we try this chemical reaction, we're going to utilize the potassium iodide as our catalyst in two different forms. The first form is going to be as a saturated solution which just means that it has a really high concentration of potassium iodide to water present. And then we're also going to try the same chemical reaction using solid potassium iodide instead of the saturated solution of Ki and see if that makes a difference in the longevity of the foam created and whether or not the foam is comparable to what we saw in the movie yesterday. Let's check it out. And last, but certainly not least, we have our 12% hydrogen peroxide trials with potassium iodide catalyst. One of the trials has potassium iodide already as a saturated solution, and the other one has solid potassium iodide crystals. We're gonna compare the rate and the foam for each of these. And just for fun, we're gonna have the little duckies down here to play in the foam. Let's add the solid potassium iodide first, since it should take longer to react. Being that it needs to dissolve, in the solution, whereas this one's already a solution.
far we can see that the consistency of this foam is definitely more like the Yes Day movie. And this foam is actually fairly hot to the touch. With the solid catalyst, we can see that it's not releasing the foam quite as fast as this one is, where the catalyst was a solution, but we can tell that it's creating the foam in segments, lasting a longer amount of time than this one is. This one more accurately represents the longevity of the reaction in the movie Yes Day. Obviously, that's not enough foam to fill an entire house, so you can only imagine how much more hydrogen peroxide and how much more potassium iodide catalyst we would have to use to create that volume of foam that was depicted in the movie Yesterday. Apparently, our adopted wild goose also wants to learn about chemistry. By the way, you don't need any fancy glassware to do this lab experiment. You could just have a plain old empty bottle. This is with 150 milliliters of 12% H2O2 hydrogen peroxide and four grams of Ki as a saturated solution. Prepare for foam. Go Catalyst, go. Now, of course, if you had that 35% hydrogen peroxide that I mentioned earlier, you'd get a much more explosive release of foam. So what's the verdict here? It definitely seems like the foaminess from this reaction is most similar to what we saw in the chemistry of yesterday. And it also happens to be a chemical reaction that does use a catalyst. However, this is not the kind of chemical that we would consider non-toxic and safe for kids to play in. So the reality here is probably that the director didn't actually use a chemical reaction, but instead was demonstrating a physical reaction between water and soap utilizing a foam machine. They probably just had a bunch of foam machines all throughout that house, especially in the toilet when it was shooting foam violently like the toilet volcano, basically destroying their entire set for three days with nothing but foam. So while it wasn't the chemical reaction we were all hoping for as chemists out there watching yesterday, it was still chemistry in that we got to see a physical reaction occur in large scale, which also looked like tons of fun. In summary, we could say that the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is the most likely chemical reaction that the directors based the foam off of for the movie to suggest that that was the chemical reaction, although it definitely was not, given the fact that the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is exothermic, which means that it produces a lot of heat not kid-friendly. And for those of you following along on my channel and wanting to apply a little bit of the chemistry to this, go ahead and test yourself and see if you can draw a complete reaction diagram for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide given the values, both catalyzed and uncatalyzed EA humps. And say yes to subscribing to the DeConta channel. Quack you later. No ducks, no glory.